Hi, today I would like to show you some magic, the ruby magic. I would like to present you a code which may be surprising to you if you are not a ruby programmer. If you are a ruby programmer, this is not a magic at all, this is your daily job. Look at this code. We have defined a very simple Ruby class called magic, which has one uh, instance variable called tricks. Uh, in Ruby, called instance variables. In other languages, you may call it like uh, attributes or something like this, or just class fields. Then we initialize the magic class by calling magic.new. Then we call magic to JSON, a method which doesn't exist. So Ruby raises a no method error and we can wrap it so we can see the result but then this is when the funny thing funny things start to happen we require a json library which comes from the standard library and then we call magic to json again please note that it's still the same object and suddenly it is actually printing something real so first we had this no such method as to json and then I printed JSON library to note that at this point we have actually some output. Okay, let's go back. And now we require another library called active support slash all and this part of Rails. And we just for debugging reasons, for logging reasons, we put it into the, the screen. And then we say magic to JSON again, which now prints active support tricks uh, like this part here. This is the output now after active support. So just by requiring another library, it actually uses, is using another method, another implementation of this method. So what happens if we require JSON again? Does it like overwrite it back? Well, it's not the case. The way it's implemented doesn't really revert the previous method. So yeah, that's like, that's probably the simplest example of a Ruby, Ruby magic I can show you. So what is the best way to deal with such uh, maybe surprising behavior of a language? But it's not unique to Ruby at all. Uh, in many other languages you can, you can do, do also very weird stuff, including Python, Java, C Sharp. If you ever played with aspect-oriented programming, it's kind of similar. Also, there are many different levels of this kind of magic, like I think it's a bit weird and it's very surprising to me at least that just requiring a library changes my existing object's runtime. Uh, I know how it works and I know why it works, but it's still, still surprising and not enough explicit that I would wish. And for those of you who don't know, this concept is called reopening classes, uh, which means you can reopen a class from the outside. You can open a class again and add some new stuff or over overwrite it. Actually, when I said reopening classes, I meant reopening objects, because in Ruby everything is an object, including the class. And serializing to JSON is actually a cross-cutting concern. It means it's important for many of your classes. If you don't do read models, if you do read models from DDD, then it's a much better to localize feature. But if you don't do it, then, then you could localize all the JSON serialization and reopen the classes in one place instead of it being scattered across many different classes. So is relying on such code something that I would say is a clean code? I am not sure. Is it something that I would say is pragmatic? Not. I would say relying on this code is like relying on legacy code. It should be fixed, 
it should be tested. Let me be more precise here for a moment. Um, magic code, implicit code is okay when you're starting during the first days, during the first week, when you want to show the results very quickly. It lets you do it with a minimal like number of lines of code. That's great. Um, but over time in bigger projects, this is becoming a huge problem. All the magic is becoming a huge problem, which is not so easy to eliminate. Uh, our team works mostly on bigger projects, on Rails projects, where there is a lot of Ruby magic, Rails magic, and it's very difficult to work with. And it doesn't take like days to revert your decision or our decision to introduce magic. It takes weeks, months, sometimes even years. It's because it's usually like the two JSON example, maybe it's not the best example, but some other things, uh, which are also magical, uh, they can like introduce you to problems which will, you will never get rid of. And it's all good in the first month, it's really becoming a problem in projects which take years. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. I think Ruby code and magic code is fun. Uh, it's good to know how it works, it's actually required to know. But uh, try to eliminate it, I would say. And by the way, if you want to learn more about Ruby Magic, understand how Rails works under the hood, this book is the best I found so far.